We've spent some time looking at MySQL dump. We want to now look at another important utility called MySQL import. This utility allows us to import data that's loaded in one or more text files directly into table structures within predefined databases. But before we're able to import data into predefined databases with tables, we need to set up our structure and create a text file which contains information that's useful for importing. So we'll call this section MySQL import permits importing data from text files into tables of course. The syntax is very simple MySQL import followed by any options followed by the DB name that we'd like to operate on followed by any number of text files beginning with text file 1 through text file n and you may specify the text files separated by spaces and MySQL import will simply include the contents of those text files sequentially but as mentioned we don't have any data and we don't have any tables or databases set up to house this new information. So what we'll do is we will task create db we'll call this contact db and people table to house contacts. So the first task is to create a contact db. That's very easy. We'll execute a create database statement and the name of the database will be simply contact so we'll copy this into the shell to get that configured and we don't even need to log in to do it but since we're going to do some work within the shell anyway including creating the table structure let's log in as the user root with the password abc123 Now we're in select current user. We're certainly as root, and of course, our prompt reveals as such. Let's go ahead and create that new database by pasting the create database statement. And now we have a database called contact. We can rename it using the alter statement. We're going to do things so that we can use statements such as alter for database and table level later on. So we'll call this particular database contact singular instead of plural for the sole purpose of being able to go in and use the alter statement. Now let's use the contact database so that we can create a table structure. Our table is going to be very simple. So next, create table with structure. The structure is going to resemble the following. We will store first name, last name, as well as business phone number we'll call this business phone one as well as email or email address four fields will be stored this is very simple to comprehend and we need to define the statements that will make this happen so we'll need to create this table structure using a create table statement create table looks like the following create table followed by the name of the table and we will need a table we'll call it people these are the people who we know and everything be between parentheses will be processed by create table so to specify the field names we'll use backticks followed by the description of each field and most of these fields will use simply a car followed by a number such as 20 this will suffice so let's create the fields in order in which we'll place the data into our text file beginning with first name followed by in between back ticks last name and we should clean this up a bit so that it's obvious last name and the back ticks is simply for parsing we'll make it also character 20 there are many types of fields that we can define but since we're storing plain ASCII text nothing special no time or date stamp information not yet at least character 20 will suffice 
followed by the business phone number, which can also be stored in a character field. So we'll def define this field as biz. In fact, we can place this information on a separate line. So biz underscore phone one, and it too will be called or defined as a character 20 type field, followed by the final field, which we'll call email, which needs back ticks and a definition. We'll go with character 30, allowing for more of the type of flexibility that you're likely to find with email addresses. You may find email addresses listed at subdomains that are pretty long, such as people.debian.org, for example. So we have a structure here. Now we want some uniqueness in this particular table and we are going to use the email field or email column as the primary key. So as a result we'll need to define that this particular field is a primary key by simply specifying primary key and this is all standard SQL statements so don't think this is specific to MySQL. You could execute these statements in a standard SQL interpreter such as Microsoft SQL and it would work. So here's our create table statement. Now you don't need to memorize any of this. If you use a show create table statement within the database, you'll see how the table was created. For example, a show database, a show create database would show how the contact database was created, but the creation of a database is inherently much more simple than the creation of a table structure. So as a result, the table structure is usually what you analyze because the table structure includes a definition of the field types. So let's execute this create table people statement to have this newly created table that we can import data into and then we'll move on to creating a dummy or our text file for import, our dummy file. Currently we have no tables so if we execute show tables nothing will be returned, zero records, zero seconds. But we'll paste what we'd like to have executed followed by a semicolon and notice it took four tenths or four hundredths of a second that is and now if we re-execute show tables let's find that you'll see we now have a table called people we can describe people where we're ultimately going to store our people and notice that we defined the column names as well as the column types character 20 and 30 for the last so 20 for 3, 30 for the last, and so on. No defaults, no other defaults were defined. Nulls are permitted. We do have a primary key set for email, which means emails need to be unique. And in the event we try to import redundant email address records, then MySQL will complain and not permit the upload of a redundant row or a record which contains a matching email address in some other column or some other row that is because the email column is considered to be the primary key so in other words if we upload one user with email address A and user number two with the same email address A an error will be returned by the DBMS because of the primary key constraint so now we have a simple table the DBMS is set up what we now need to do since permissions isn't a question we have a user called root and in fact let's select user host from mysql.user just to confirm the users who do have privileges and who are on the system. We have two roots, one Linux CBT and a show grants for Linux CBT reveals that the user has all privileges. So all of our users have access to any of the databases here. No problems whatsoever whichever user we decide to go with but we do need to create a data file. We'll do so in a se separate shell window, and we'll need to ensure that the columns are aligned. First name first, then last, then business phone, and then email address. So let's exit to a shell. We'll run the, the Pico editor, and we're going to create a file called people. And the reason why we're creating a file called people is because of MySQL's or MySQL imports default behavior. When importing a text file into a database, MySQL import will strip the suffix from the name of the file and attempt to upload the text file into a corresponding or a matching table. So for example, if we call the file people.txt, then 
when we attempt to import, MySQL import will search to see if there's a table called people and stuff the data there, but the fields should align. Super. So we have this new buffer open. Let's define some records. First person will define, has a first name of Trisha, and we'll use tab separation. Last name, Hyacinth. Business phone 1, 888-573-5900. Or 4943, followed by email address of Trisha at LinuxCBT.com. Let's add yet another user, Diana McKenzie. Similar number, different extension, although 888-573-4943. And we'll add her address in here as well. Let's add another user. And that's Evelyn Lois, and we'll add her number separated by tabs as 888-573-4943 with an email address of Evelyn at linuxcbt.com. And let's add yet another user. Let's add Harrington, last name Ozuna, phone number 888 as well. 573-4943 followed by an email address of harrington at linuxcbt.com and let's add yet another user Najib last name Abood same number and here you can see we left out one of the eight 573-4943 with a last or an email address that is of Najib at linuxcbt.com. So we have five records that we're willing to enter into our database. We want to save this file as people.txt. Now we have a new file called people.txt which is importable. It has four columns which correlate directly to the order in which we defined the people table. So how do we use MySQL import to import this file? Quite simple. Execute MySQL import, followed by help, and you'll see the options that are permitted for its use. And here's a variable it doesn't recognize, so we need to clean this up. Let's modify etc my.cnf. Sometimes this happens, it simply means you need to comment out because the program is reading a section but doesn't understand the value. Let's rerun the help, and now we get the help. How do we import this data? It's quite simple. MySQL import follows a simple syntax as we showed you. All you need to do is specify any options such as the username, who you should connect as, the database, and so on, or the username, the host, password, followed by the database and the name of the text file. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll execute MySQL import. User will be root. The host is localhost, although we don't need to specify, and the password is abc123. But it's optional, but we can do it anyway. Followed by the DB name, which is called contact, singular. Followed by the name of the text file, people.txt, which we'll use tab completion to reveal. If all goes well, this will be imported directly into our people table. Let's try it. Now, we could specify the table. That's certainly an option. Now, an error was thrown when we attempted to log in because the password is incorrect. And let's see if any other errors are thrown. File varlab could not be found. Now this path that's being searched is based on MySQL, the server that is importing the file from its space of operation. Here's what's happening. MySQL sees no other space outside of varlab MySQL contact people, or at least the place where you intend to import the data. We are in we are attempting to import the data into a database named contact so the directory on the file system where the contact database is able to operate is called contact beneath varlib mysql we need to turn on one option it's called local to permit the importation of files from other directories so if we use dash dash local we will then allow 
the file to be uploaded from the client's perspective. These servers are all one and the same, but the logic is that MySQL's view of the file system is limited. So it's a security breach to permit the daemon to be able to upload outside of its space of operation. Again, keep in mind when MySQL runs, it initially runs as root, but then immediately switches to MySQL. And in some cases, in some versions, it doesn't, it doesn't ever run as root. For example, if you don't need to bind to a low port, then it never runs as root, it runs as the user MySQL. The user MySQL cannot enter root's home directory and use files or interact with files. And as a result, an error will be thrown. But if you use the local feature, then you'll be able to import files directly. Here, the MySQL import outputs the number of records that it read based on tab separation or tab delimiters. And the number of records it read matches exactly the number of records we defined. Let's execute WC, which performs a word count. Use the line counting option against our people file. And you'll see that it contains five entries. A cat of people.txt indeed shows that it contains five entries. Those five records were imported into the people table. Now we need to confirm as such. So in order to do so, let's execute MySQL, connect as root, and we'll specify the password as ABC123, and we'll use the database contact. Once there, we will select star from people, which can be completed using tab completion. And here are the records in a nice structured format, first name, last name, and so on. Notice the column headers are not being shown because we have a default option set. If we quit and find that option, let's see if it's in our local directory here, in root's local directory, and it's set to false. So let's modify our local setting here. We'll pico my.cnf. We'll set column names to true, and then re-enter. But this time, we'll just run from the outside. So we'll use the contact database, but we'll also send the option from the shell, the Linux shell, using the dash E option. And in between single quotes, simply specify, select star from people, semicolon. And there you have the output with the column headers, first name, last name, business phone, and email. So the five records have been imported. Now what if you determine that there was a mistake and you wanted to re-import these records? How would that work? Or what if you wanted to append? Let's make a modification to the people file. And we keep running nano, so I guess we need to install it. Let's modify using pico people.txt. And now let's say we want to add another user to the file. No problem. Let's go ahead and add that user. Let's add Eamon Modin888573. And as you can see, we're listing all of the Linux CBT employees. 4943 and list his address as Eamon at linuxcbt.com. What happens if you attempt to import this data set is that it'll be appended to the database. Let's try that to show you what we mean. We're going to execute a MySQL, or MySQL import that is, to read the file with the local option. Remember, local is required unless the file exists within the space that MySQL, the user, can read. So we're going to import the people.txt file. And after we've imported, we will then run MySQL, user root, password ABC123, E, and we'll select star from people, semicolon, from the default database. And that is. We have the wrong back tick. We need a single quote. That is from the default database of contact. Let's see how this all works. So what happens in this particular case? Six records were imported. Notice what MySQL did in this case. No duplication. Let's rerun that select, which we have in our history just to show you. The import utility was able to determine that all of the previously uploaded records were the same. Now there is a way to work around this. If for some reason you notice duplication, run your command but use the dash D option. The dash uppercase D option will delete or flush the table prior to importation. So let's try that. 
And let's run MySQL import with the help option. We'll find that option in the dump. And it's lowercase d. So it's first delete all rows with lowercase d. So we need a lowercase d, not uppercase d. And this will delete any entries and import them. If in the event that you notice that there is duplication, but MySQL import is written in such a way that it avoids duplication wherever possible. So we can import directly into the table space. Now, just a quick word about the whole issue of whether or not the MySQL daemon is able to access files on the file system. If you PSAX or PSAUX grep MySQL, you'll notice that it runs as the user MySQL. The safe process runs as root, that's the initial process. If it needs to bind to a low port and do anything else, it runs as root. But everything else runs as MySQL. Which means that within the var live MySQL space, the MySQL daemon's view of the file system is limited just to what you see here. It's unable to navigate to root to read a file called people.txt, which is why you need that local option. With the local option, we're permitting the client MySQL import to upload from the current location. The server is then able to accept the file from an alternate location. That's the reason why we need it. So the import program imports directly into a DB and again if you have multiple text files it'll accept that as well. So that's very easy to imagine and to use in the event that your data is split across multiple files. So that's a little bit about using MySQL import. I think we've set ourselves up for studying SQL based commands for altering and interacting more heavily with tables and databases. We've created a database purposely with a singular name similarly for a table. We need to alter this. We want to set up auto incrementing values so that as users are added an incrementer just keeps adding so that we have a sense or an easy count. There's a lot we can do with such a simple structure. So as a result, we're going to look at some more key utilities, but also some key usages of SQL within MySQL. Again, all of this is applicable thus far, at least all the SQL commands that we've run, to any SQL compliant DBMS. Of course, all the utilities we've run are specific to MySQL, and many of the features work primarily within a Unix or Nix-based environment, such as Unix or Linux, or even Mac OS X, which provides a shell. So we're going to move on to doing other things with this wonderful DBMS that we call MySQL.